Welcome to Beyond Just Money with me, Santa. And today I have with me Nidhi Sinha, who is the head of content at Calcine Media. And in this week's Beyond Just Money, we will discuss about the Australian labor market and where is it headed. Welcome, Nidhi. Thanks, Santa. It's always a pleasure to be here. Well, the Australian unemployment rate has dropped to its lowest in a year. Speculations are rife about impending inflation and the shift to normalcy. So how are you looking at the Australian labor market, Nidhi? Well, a consistently declining unemployment rate is a good sign for the economy as it sets in motion a chain of events leading up to higher productivity and growth. As companies hire a greater number of workers, their costs increase, but so do their capacities. Higher employment allows easier delegation of work with a structured outlay of responsibility. Tasks are divided among specialized teams, making each employee productive and efficient. The drop in unemployment is backed by the faster than expected recovery of the Australian economy, even as you see that most other countries are still struggling to emerge out of the pandemic-induced recession. However, in the face of global adversity, Australia's government reforms and resilience have given the country an edge. Certainly, Nidhi, and the April unemployment data brought along with it a sigh of relief for Australia. But employment figures from April paint a slightly different picture. So what are your views on the same? The government had anticipated a momentary rise in unemployment immediately after the withdrawal of the JobKeeper wage subsidy program in Australia. If we look at the data, the jobless rate fell to 5.5% in April uh, compared with 5.7% in March and much closer to the pre-pandemic level. The Australian Bureau of Statistics reported that in total there was a decline of 30,600 jobs in April, right after the JobKeeper program ended on March 28. The report basically suggested that the decline was led by part-time positions. During the period, actually, if you see full-time positions soared by 33,800, but part-time positions fell by 64,400. The unemployment figure of 5.5% which was recorded in April was the lowest since April 2020 last year, marking Australia's robust recovery within just a year. Despite the loss of almost 31,000 jobs, the ABS reported that the decline was much less than expected. Apart from the rollback of the JobKeeper program, the fall in employment could simply be reflecting seasonal unemployment, which is completely normal. The Bureau also stated that there was not much of a discernible impact left behind after JobKeeper ended. But with the economic recovery in full swing, will the stance of Reserve Bank of Australia on interest rates see a change anytime soon? Well, if you see the Reserve Bank of Australia's stance on interest rate is not expected to change anytime soon. The RBA has set out an inflation rate target of 2 to 3 percent before considering moving up the interest rates. Improved employment figures have blown off some steam regarding speculations around the end of, uh, you know, the JobKeeper program. However, the improvement may still not guarantee any changes to the interest rate policy. Global demand for commodities remains at an all-time high, especially for iron ore, copper and natural gas, which points to a looming inflationary uh, scenario. These concerns remain unheeded by RPA as the authority believes it is best to keep interest rates low. Additionally, the recent improvement in the cash earnings of major banks adds a sense of security to the ongoing monetary stance by the bank. If you see, a trend of decreased defaults was observed by major banking organizations like Westpac, NAP and ANZ Bank. What helped these financial titans were lower deposit pricing, which improved net interest margins and an increased focus on cost reduction. And then if we talk about unemployment, where do you see it going from here? The current unemployment figure is actually only slightly higher than the pre-pandemic level of unemployment. The essential fact here is that the pre-pandemic levels are also reflective of immigrants and employees who migrated interstate. Thus, the country has obtained current figures solely based on self-capacity, which is a fiat worth noticing. However, the labor force still possesses the scope to improve its skill set. The economy is facing a roadblock in the form of low skill set. 
most new jobs over the previous year involved positions like sales assistants store persons and accountants additionally the requirement of high skill jobs also remains unsatiated as many professionals were forced to shift back to regional cities during the lockdown and were not able to move back to the main cities lastly what about the wage growth at a time when most employers are in search of high skill labor like we were discussing the labor market may see a high level of employee poaching most businesses and organizations are actually on the lookout for experienced professionals however this rise in demand may not necessarily guarantee a wage hike for many of these workers if you see wages have not grown as quickly as other factors have adapted to the changing economic scenario the rba is also pushing for higher wages as it would ascertain a consumer price growth of 2 to 3% which in turn is a prerequisite for rising interest rates the pressure to keep wages unchanged makes more sense once they are viewed as a cost for someone as of now firms are not willing to raise wages because it does add to their costs however when there is a lack of experienced professionals coming from abroad experts generally expect a rise in wages with lack of supply of skilled labor and the rising demand wages are bound to rise at some point it is worth noting that the rba's aim of higher inflation sourced through stronger wages might still be achieved through increased employment However, if proven ineffective, the government can shift its focus from employment growth to wage growth through tools like minimum wage and award increases. Absolutely Nidhi, and the labor market is something that is always keenly watched. Thank you for sharing your views today with our listeners. Sure Samta, thanks. Well, to our listeners who want to listen to this podcast again, please log on to our website that is calcaimedia.com or you could also go on to our YouTube channel. And until we see you next with yet another insightful episode of Beyond Just Money, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until we meet next, stay apprised and invest wise with Calcaim.